Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for uh, the invitation. I'm very glad to speak here. Uh, so all I will tell you about today is a uh, joint work with uh, Emmanuel Wagner uh, from uh, Dijon. And so I will speak about forms and categorification. And uh, I have, uh, yeah, the aim of these talks, uh, and they have several aims, are first to introduce uh, introduce uh, films in a categorical setting. Uh, so the category of films. Uh, so then to uh, explain a formula. So to um, uh, and then to uh, relate. Uh, this to um, to um, well link homology and or link homology. So there will be several kind of homologies we'll be looking at, and um, yeah, and I think that's it. Uh, and as I'm writing this down, I realize now that it's quite a lot. So I probably won't have time to uh, speak about all what I want to speak, but uh, I'd rather be slow and not to finish. Uh, so. so please feel free to interrupt if uh, there is something unclear. Um, OK, so um, so I want to introduce a category of forms. So first of all, I need to uh, define some uh, object. So uh, uh, my graph. So this will be uh, the object of my category. So Moi is for Murakami. Uh, Murakami, Otsuki, uh, and Yamada um, is um, so as a graph with multiple uh, properties. So first, uh, first of all, it's uh, it's a trivalent graph. It's oriented, and it's uh, it's labeled, so meaning that the uh, edges of my graph uh, carry a, a non-negative number or a positive number. And it's it's plane, so it's it's not, so uh, so meaning that it's really embedded in the plane, not just embeddable. Okay, planar graphs are embeddable, plane graphs are really embedded. Uh, so maybe I can uh, graph. Ta 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 is a ta 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 graph. Uh, so maybe an example. Ah yeah, and I should say something. Uh, yeah, these two things come with a flow condition. So, but I will make it clear. Uh, an example here. So, I can take, uh, for example, uh, so, so this is a plain trivalent graph. So, no problem. So, it doesn't have to be uh, vertex-free loops in my my definition of graphs. So. Um, and they have to put some orientation, and they have a kind of a flow condition. So I will try to make it. Uh, is it yeah, it's probably. Uh, probably I want to do something like this, and then I have to. So my flow condition tells me that uh, whenever. So maybe I have seven here, then I have four and three. So you see, whenever I meet a vertex, I have as many people going in as people going out. So uh, yeah, you can try to fill out the well the rest of the example. And maybe I want to put two here, and uh, I mean th there are many ways to uh, to do it. You can put a one here, and then you have a four. And okay, probably I made some not so smart choices, so it's not possible to fill this uh, diagram up. But 
uh, in principle, so this is a noise graph if you manage to complete the, uh, the labeling. OK. Um, so why is this interesting? Um, ah, OK, there is an extra here. Yeah, but it's not very OK. So uh, why is this interesting? Well, it's because. Um, so if you, uh, maybe I should, uh, should, uh, well, I should ask the question why a little later. Um, well, and then you have a, like a theorem. Uh, so I, I would say from, so, a mo a, Murakami, Yotsuki, and Yamada, and probably I should add uh, Vogel and Kaufman and Wu. So it's it's more it's a cluster it's a cluster theorem. I mean it's I think it was uh, uh, which says that if you add uh, ah no it's here of course I'm stupid okay uh, if you if you look uh, the set of all my graphs up to some uh, scan relation. Ah, yeah, I have to, OK, in my talk, I will fix uh, n will be a positive integer. Uh, if I add uh, this scan relation to, if I look at the set of uh, my graphs, uh, well, I have to look actually at a ZQ, Q inverse module, uh, well, of my graph up to this kind relation, then uh, actually this has dimension one, and so these rules, okay, the rules over there, the rules on the screen, uh, enables to define to uh, to associate with every my graph gamma. Uh, um, polynomial, well, okay, an element of um, ZQ Q inverse. And I want to denote this uh, bracket gamma. And uh, so maybe I should explain this a little bit. Uh, so this, this bracket numbers here, they are like quantum binomials. So if you don't know what a quantum binomial is, so it's, a, it's a, like a binomial, but you have to q-deform a little bit your intuition. Um, yeah. So that's it. And OK. And I want to refer, uh, well, I want to refer, yeah, I want to call this set of rules like you know, the Moy calculus. So Moy. Okay. Uh, all right. And so, um, okay, I should probably, yeah, so why is this interesting? Uh, it's because if you add to this uh, set of rules a way to resolve crossings, so maybe I will, uh, maybe it's not reasonable. If you add to, the set of rules the following um, so a b uh, yeah I will probably uh, need help here um, Yeah. 
So, and something similar for uh, the other graphing. So it's very similar. It's, it's, it's basically the same. Just here, you have to put Q to the A minus K. Uh, so if you do this, so you will be able to uh, so crossing rules uh, plus uh, rules on the screen. Uh, this enables you to associate with every uh, colored oriented link diagram. So by colored, I'm, okay, labeled oriented not diagram. So labeled by uh, powers by by, um, by some integers. Uh, this you will be in a, well. You will be able to define a, a yeah a Laurent polynomial in Q associated with every uh, such uh, link diagrams, and uh, it turns out to be a, a link invariant. Uh, uh, produces. Well, this picture here tells you that you can actually remove the, yeah, yeah, so all this can be, uh, yeah, you can, well, okay, whenever you can change orientation, you, the relation holds as well with this, well, with the reverse orientations. No, it's, I mean, if you change the orientation, the correct way to think about that is to replace k by n minus k. Uh, link in variant. And well, and of course, uh, I mean the, the good way to think about that is to think that all these rules that come from uh, algebra, from a, like a, um, from the uh, representation theory of a quantum group, and uh, so and I don't want to go into details here. It's just that this link invariant is uh, this is. Uh, the uh, UQ SLN link invariant. And whenever I compute a, a, well, such quantum invariants, I need to uh, label my, uh, the strain of my links uh, by, some, uh, demand of, uh, by some representation of, of this guy. And here, so my label are only integers, so I should read, I should link invariant. And uh, where I should think about uh, label A in Z, one, uh, as representing the exterior power of V, the n dimensional, the type 1 n dimensional representation of UQS and N. So it's a Q deform, actually, uh, exterior power of, of V. But uh, OK. So, so that's it. So OK, that's it for my, that's what I wanted to say about the object of my category. So there are still this, uh, so there are these small graphs. And yeah, and I have this collection of rules. And uh, now I will speak about morphism in my category. And the aim of all this is to. Uh, try to categorize this rule. So to lift this, yes. Yeah. No, no, they don't have to. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I mean, okay, so you, yes, so there will be, yeah, so sorry, yes, from how it looks, but you can reduce every graph to the empty graph using these rules. So yes, of course, if there are values, then you can go from one to another by, um, yeah. But you see, I mean, here you have uh, some sum, so it's not exactly clear what you would mean by going from one to the other, uh, because you kind of split. So you have different, you have a su you have a formal sum of graphs, and so it's not super clear what Maybe like this should. No, the, okay. If you look at the module of of uh, the sky module, uh, it's it's as dimension one, so it's only the empty graph. I mean, the, the base for the space is the empty graph. Mm. Uh, OK. And so um, so now I want to speak about the morphism of my category. So um, I want this morphism to be like cobordisms. And so, um, so if we see graphs as being like uh, 
uh, one-dimensional manifold with singularities, we should expect the cobordism between graphs to be like surfaces with some singularities. Uh, so yeah, so definition a foam. So I will first define uh, what uh, the analog of a closed surface. Okay, so closed foam. But of course, the theory extends to like foamy cobordisms. Okay, so I will describe what a uh, probably say closed foam. But uh, I'm sure you can cook up a definition for uh, foamy cobordisms. Mm. A closed foam is a CW complex. Uh, okay. Well, finite and two dimensional. Uh, so, with three locomotives. So, I want to. Uh, so, maybe I, I, will, I want to write this here. So, I had my, gra my graphs, they were trivalent uh, oriented. Uh, labeled and plain, and somehow it's reasonable to expect my cobordism to have the same kind of feature as my object. So, uh, so I have three local models. Uh, so, and they should. Uh, so, I mean, a neighborhood of any point in my CW complex is uh, deformorphic to one of these uh, three pictures. And so, we see here that. Uh, so. We have like a book with only three pages, and so this should reflect the, the trivalent properties of my of my graphs. Okay, if you if you if you draw the identity gra uh, the identity cobordism between one well of one graph, then you you will see some things like this very often for each vertex. You will see something like this, and you have as well this more complicated uh, uh, object. So you should think about that as being a a ping pong table with one one net uh, and one other net on the other uh, side, uh, but uh, in a, well, which crosses. So, um, so yeah. Uh, I mean, there are many ways to think about that. Or it's uh, the one the cone of a one skeleton of a tetrahedra. Or, or yeah. I mean, uh, okay. And so we see that my my facets they are so. Well, the two-dimensional sets, which I will call uh, the two, yeah, the two-dimensional cells, which I will call facets, very often, they are labeled. Uh, okay, and this is not surprising. It's it's uh, so the trivalent property we see it, the label we see it. Uh, or the my two-dimensional cells that will be oriented, and in, in a kind of uh, well, I want to have this flow condition as well, meaning that so so the one-dimensional. Uh, cells that will be oriented as well. And whenever you have a picture like this, I want that the orientation of this facet, so the big one, is uh, not compatible with, well, is anti-compatible with the orientation of, of the binding. And the orientation of the, the, small, uh, the small facet, uh, I want them to be compatible with the orientation of the binding. So this is this, uh, just saying that uh, we have this flow condition really working as well in this two-dimensional setting. So, uh, so theory oriented, we have this flow condition, and the planarity. The so, if you look at a plane graph, then in particular you you have for free. Well, if if you fix an orientation of um, of the plane, then you have for free a, a cyclic order of the edges uh, on, on this graph, and so here we we require as well that we so we want a cyclic ordering of the facets around the around the bindings. So this will be useful a uh, little later. OK. With labels, orientation, orientation, and cyclic ordering. So I just want to, so I mean, if you are not familiar with this, it's probably a little bit hard to swallow. But I mean, all the, all the data and all this are really reasonable from the, if we think about these guys as being cobordism between graphs. I mean, between my mark graph, we carried a lot of combinatorial data already. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, you, you want that the cyclic ordering is, so you want that uh, uh, around such things uh, that uh, the picture is embeddable in R3 locally, only locally. So, yeah, this fix uh, some conditions, uh, but yeah, that's it. 
OK. And so, um, and now, yeah, and now I promise you to explain you a formula. So we have a formula here. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. Uh, OK. So this formula is meant to, um, so yeah, this is uh, probably the main result of the paper, even though it's not a result since it's a definition. Uh, but so, um, so f is my foam, OK? And I want to associate to f a numbers. I mean, and I should be more precise here. So uh, this is this will not be obvious at all from the definition from the definition. But actually, uh, uh, tau and f uh, is will be an element of uh, the ring of um, symmetric polynomial on n variables. So you can see the variables are appearing here. And now I should uh, try to explain you. So there are many things that uh, which are not defined here, and my aim in the next uh, five minutes is to, oh, okay, ten minutes maybe, is to explain you what this guy are. So I should tell you what this chi i. Uh, so I should tell you what c is. So c is uh, will be a coloring. So I will explain you what a coloring is in a, in a moment. And so and then you have some data associated to the foam and the coloring. So this chi i, this theta i j plus. Ah, oh, I forgot about something. And the chi i j, okay. So I have to explain you this, and I have to explain you what this guy is. So yeah, I should have uh, uh, tell you something. Um, sorry. Uh, what is the reference? So it's it's uh, it's just a definition. So this is a quantity associated to the foam, and I denote it by tau n f. Yeah, here. N is fixed, yeah, yeah, for all the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah, N is fixed and is a uh, positive integer. Yeah. Yeah, Q disappeared. Yeah, so Q. Uh, yeah, Q lives on uh, like. So Q will keep track of some grading. So I will not speak too much about the grading, but uh, so as you can see, this ring is graded. And so Q will refer to the some kind of grading there. OK. Other questions? No. OK, so uh, I should have, uh, so I forgot about something. Uh, my forms are two dimensional, so they can carry even more combinatorial information than the graph does, the, the graph do. So uh, my facets, they will carry extra information. They will, so they, are, they already have labels. OK, and they have decoration as well. And uh, so the decoration on a facet is a symmetric polynomial in, so a decoration here is a symmetric polynomial in A variables. Symmetric polynomial. So, OK. So now I want to explain you a little bit this formula. So, but uh, maybe I have to make a list of what I have to explain. So. You didn't explain where the numbers of the graph are. They are just say this number as being. Uh, if you look at the graph, you should think about this number as, um, a, well, representing the exterior. The a a represents the a exterior power of some representation. Here, they are, they are just say come with the data. I mean. It's a, a foam come with a labeling of its facets, so they are just numbers. They are nothing else but numbers. It's quite, it's good enough, I think. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so it's. <laughs> A priori, it can be it can be arbitrary, arbitrary large, but uh, we'll see that. I mean, maybe we will not see that, but uh, in fact. Uh, if a if the levels are bigger than n, the foam you will see will be considered as being trivial. Uh, yeah, then then the foam itself is is like zero. And so, yeah, in some sense. Okay, so I have to. So I, I want to explain you what chi i is. Uh, why chi i j is, uh, and what theta plus i j is. And I, I have to explain you a little bit what this so. These are my decoration there. 
So f is meant to be, the small f is the facets. And so I have to explain you a little bit what this is. Uh, p f c of f. OK. So all right, so I, I drew here an example of foam. So, you, so it's a torus. Uh, and yeah, with two, uh, some kind of compression disk inside. OK, you can, you can see this maybe all the way. Uh, you take two spheres, one with level 1, one with level 2, and you glue them together on two spots. And so the levels on the gluing are 3, because it's 1 plus 2. And so this is probably another way to see this. And I have, as I told you, so I have some decoration. So I put the decoration. I hope it's clear. So on the facets, on the two facets, three with the point mirror called P1 and P3, and and all this. And okay. And no. So I so I right now I speak about closed things. So there are cobalt in between the empty graph and the empty graph. So yes, there are cobalt in, but it's probably the, the, not the smartest way to th think about that. Okay. So there are really closed things, and I want to explain you the formula here. So I fix for this example n is equal to 4. And so I have a set of pigments. So a color is a, as you will see, a color is a collection of pigments. Uh, and I call them x1, x2, x3, and x4. And it's not a, so they are the same x as there in my polynomial ring. OK, and I have an, or, I have an order here. So x1 is smaller than x2, x2 is smaller than x3, and so on. OK. And the coloring is uh, so um, it associates with every two-dimensional cell, so every facet, a subset of P with as many pigments as the label require. Okay? Uh, and I have a flow condition as well, meaning that um, whenever you have two small facets meeting and going into a big one, I want that the set on the big one is a different union of the two small ones. Okay, so this is an example. I think I made no mistakes. Okay, very good. So now um, I can look at. Uh, I can, if I fix one pigment, so x1, say, I can look at all the small facet which contains x1 in their color. So in this case, this would be the half torus on the on the right, and then the two compression disks. And you see that it's a uh, it's a closed surface, and it's actually uh, always. Uh, Oriented, um, and so you can play the same game with all this, with all, with all the pigments, and you can compute the uh, Euler characteristic of these guys, and this is this are precisely the these guys. Okay, so uh, so this is uh, done. Okay, so now I can play another game. I can take two uh, pigments. And look at the symmetric difference of the two monochrome surfaces. Okay, so for example, uh, maybe I want to do something. Ah, yeah, I uh, should have said something. So it's definitely possible that one monochrome surface is empty. The monochrome surfaces they can be disconnect. I mean, they don't have to be connected. So uh, yeah. So uh, maybe. So if I take the symmetric difference, what I see is uh, as, uh, as exactly the torus with no disk inside because I remove. Uh, so as I have uh, green and blue here, I remove the, the disk because it's a symmetric difference. So here I see a, uh, I was where, yeah, here I see a torus, and the Euler characteristic of this guy is zero. And so this is my uh, chi ij. So this I define, I think. Um, okay, and now this theta plus are a little bit more tricky. So if you look at the symmetric difference of two monochrome surfaces, you will see an orientable uh, surface. And uh, it's naturally, I mean, it's naturally divided in two regions. So one is color. So if you look at, OK, we can keep going on this example, x1, x, x4. If you look at uh, this guy, so you will see that the left uh, is colored by blue. And the, ah, no, OK, the right is colored by uh, uh, blue and the left is colored by green, and so uh, these two regions meet at, at two circles. Okay, and thanks to the ordering of this guy and the cyclic ordering of uh, the facets around bindings, I have a notion of positive and negative circles. So in this case, I declare this. I mean, according to 
uh, whose uh, pigment goes on the left and whose pigment goes on the right. Uh, you have to fix a rule, and and I don't remember what we fixed in the paper. So it's but there is definitely a rule to fix, and um, so you have a notion of positive and negative cycles, and you just simply count this number of cycles, and this is uh, theta plus. So we see, for example, that for x2, x4, the symmetric difference is empty, so there is absolutely no cycle at all. Okay, and so the number is zero here. Okay, uh, so this is done. And now for each decorate, so I will ev so I, I need to still define this guy. Uh, and for each decoration, for yeah, for each decoration, I evaluate it exactly. So you see, okay, let me pick uh, an example. For example, P4, so it's a symmetric polynomial in two variables, and so I evaluate it on red and green, so meaning x2 and x4. Okay, so now, of course, you have forgotten the formula, but the, the term as you, well, the, so it's a, it's a state sum, so I mean, the, the term associated to the coloring I just chose is exactly this one. So I have, I had a sign which was uh, somehow encoded by the theta plus here and the chi i, and it's written here. And then I multiply all the polynomial, uh, the, well, the decoration evaluated in my variables. And then I add some chi i, so x i minus x j to the something. And the something was precisely this guy divided by 2. So as you can see, so we see this guy happening, this guy, and this guy. And they all have power, uh, power 1, because this is 2, 2, and 2. And the other one are not there. OK? So I don't, I don't expect you at all to, um, to remember all this. But so the point is the formula is a little, it's, it's not, finally, it's not too complicated to, it's totally combinatorial. So there is nothing, in, so there is no black box or something. It's just, uh, it's a big white box. But yeah, uh, the decoration are symmetric polynomials. So, no. Uh, so uh, you you want the. Uh, so, okay. So P one it lives where it lives on the facet there, and so you want it to be a symmetric polynomial in three variables because this facet has about three. Uh, yeah, it it could be anything. So it's just an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I yeah, so, uh, so yeah. Thank you. Uh, I didn't make it clear, but the the decoration is part of the data of the film. Was it okay that P is one? Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's a symmetric. One is a symmetric polynomial. No, no. The degree is. To, I mean, you should think uh, about this uh, uh, decoration as being like an extension of of dots in. Uh, yeah, so no, they, they are, it's, it's fine. They can be anything. OK. So that's it. And um, all right, so the formula. Uh, and uh, now I want to say what it's useful for. Coloring, yeah, yeah, you should sum over all colorings. So maybe, yeah, so this is, there is a non obvious fact. So fact, and, but this is definitely not obvious. Uh, so, uh, so the fact that it's symmetric, it's not extremely surprising uh, since you sum over all colorings. I mean, you have some signs, so you have to be a little careful. But the signs are there exactly on this purpose, to make it symmetric. Um, the fact that it's a polynomial, it's definitely not obvious. But it's true. Yeah, yeah, after summation. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is not a polynomial. So yeah. Um, uh, OK. So the theorem. Uh, 
uh, is the following. So this evaluation, so to n plus uh, what I want to call the BHMV universal construction. Uh, I'll say a word about that in, in one second. Uh, gives a functor, uh, well, I would say monoidal functor, F, N, maybe, which goes from the goes from the category foam. So with object my graphs and uh, cobotism foams between these my graphs, to the category uh, I wanted to. Uh, I didn't give a name to that. So of um, to the category of uh, projective, uh, I, okay, finitely generated projective graded module over this ring. Okay, such that uh, the graded rank. So I don't know exactly the graded rank of F n of gamma is precisely the. Uh, polynomial associated to gamma. Does it make sense? No? Uh, so I should probably say what uh, the universal construction is. So BHMV is for Blanchet, Habegger, Massbaum, and Vogel. Uh, and it's... Uh, it's designed as follows, so I can actually, I will, uh, so if I take a graph gamma, I associate, I define this guy to be simply the, a very, very big uh, free, uh, okay, I want to call this, sorry, I want to call this Rn. So for each foam, uh, which goes from the empty graph to gamma, I take one copy of Rn, so it's huge. I don't even mod out by anything, so so it's really huge. Uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, it doesn't really matter, but we, we I don't know, in the paper we were, I mean, we, we could do it, so it doesn't really matter, actually. So if you want, you can put it, make it symmetric or non-symmetric. It, it doesn't matter in the end. But uh, yeah, we, okay, we can make it symmetric. So it's, it's true as well. So it doesn't uh, matter. And we mod out by a, an intersection of uh, the kernel of some application. So for each foam which goes from my graph to the empty set, it takes a formal linear combination of uh, so lambda i f i, and it takes to it takes it to uh, to uh, to sum of lambda i to tau n. Uh, I have to be clever now. F i composed with g. So so you mod out by so somehow you want, you construct this guy as, uh, yeah. I, so the idea is to, to say, OK, I have a numerical invariant, tau, uh, given by this formula. And uh, I want to uh, distinguish foams from 0. Uh, I want, OK, I want that a foam which I can't distinguish, uh, OK. If, if you have a foam which goes from the empty set to gamma, it makes no sense to apply my, to, you can't take tau of this because this is not a closed foam. But what you can do is you can, you can glue something else on it and uh, see if it's uh, zero on, I mean, and then you, so you can glue something which goes from gamma to the empty set, as I do here. And then you can apply tau, uh, tau on that. And basically the universal construction tells you that, so you want to, you build a space where, uh, 
two foams in this space are different, only well, if and only if you can distinguish them with tau. In the sense that if you glue something on two of them, and if you take tau of these two, then uh, yeah, you can find such a completion such that it, they are different. So I don't know. So the formula is there. And so you can extend this, uh, well, this construction extend, extends naturally to, um, to what? To, uh, to, to morphism. So this, the, the morphism part of the functor is uh, basically for free. Yes, so, yeah, yeah, so the, yeah. So in the end, we have that the rank of the, but you have to prove, I mean, uh, okay. So universal construction is basically this idea, and so you can apply it to anything you like. But uh, it's not, it's not, so it will not always work. So it doesn't, I mean, in the, there is nothing which ensures you that you will end up with something finite. So you have to prove this. But for a gamma, which is empty, it's the unit. Yeah, but it's, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, it's obvious because uh, uh, yeah, it's obvious. But I unfortunately I but we I can explain you this after. But it's really it's uh, it's two line uh, calculus or maybe one and a half. I don't know. Um, okay, so I'm very very far from being finished, but the time says otherwise. I don't know. Uh, okay. Ah yeah. Uh, and maybe, so this was probably the first part of the theorem. And the second part is, uh, so Fn plus, uh, so, so Ricard complexes or Rouquier complexes, it depends a little bit where you come from. Um, so uh, if you don't understand this part of the Talk, don't worry. Uh, I will not explain. <laughs> uh, yields. Uh, uh, um, uh, link um, the uh, de uh, new defi. Well, link uh, the okay equivariance uh, SLN. Link homology. Um, so, okay, so just, I mean, whenever you uh, want to build a link homology, so, and you, so there is a kind of standard procedure which, um, which lifts, you see, I had a formula for, uh, for the crossings to express the crossings in terms of. Uh, um, yeah, formal sums of, of graph, and there is a kind of canonical way. I mean, it's not canonical, I, but there is a way to lift this into a um, homological algebra, say, provided you have such a functor. And uh, so you see uh, uh, a link invariant, and it's, yeah. And so it's uh, it's a it's an equi it's the equivalent version of the SLN link homology, and so in particular it categorifies the uh, SLN polynomial invariant. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, uh, maybe okay. Maybe I can. So I have what. So I, I planned a little bit to tell you how the proofs work. So uh, the proof basically works like this. So you um, all the equality I had on graphs, they had to be translated into some isomorphisms. And to prove that, uh, uh, so yeah, you basically try to lift all the equality you had into isomorphisms. And so what is an isomorphism? It's uh, well. It's well, to prove that something is an, is an isomorphism, you have to take, well, this guy and its inverse and prove that, well, their composition are indeed the identity. And so this is one instead, well, this is one. Uh, so you can see that this guy is a composition of two uh, things, and, well, and the composition is the identity. And if you go the other way around, it's as well the identity on the same kind of form, but with a green part uh, on the middle. Yeah, 
So you prove this kind of thing uh, by showing that the, um, yeah, basically tau uh, satisfies uh, this local relation. So tau of something which contains this is equal to tau of so the same thing when you have replaced this guy to this guy. Exactly. Yes, but on, but in this special case, you yeah, the coloring are in one one correspondence. Yeah, in this special case. But then you have you have formulas which are a little more ugly, and so this is an example of what you prove. Uh, so this this is a, I mean it's not very difficult. It's just painful computations, and so you you look at all over all coloring and blah blah blah, and then you have to compare some. So you have to. <laughs> You have to draw all kind of colorings you can think of, and then you should, uh, yeah, you look at when when the, this this chi i j are a little bit different, and so I don't know if it's visible, but yeah, there are some green cells where they are, it's indeed different, so you do that, and then then it's done. No, 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 uh, no, it's by hand. <laughs> no, but there is a, a way to check uh, that it's. Uh, it's not too wrong. Uh, yeah, half. Because, OK, I can't zoom here, but uh, <laughs> no, it's just half. But, uh, it's half computer generated. No, it took me uh, two days, I think. Yeah, And then three more days to check that it's correct. But yeah. Uh, yeah. OK, and uh, so unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. So it's uh, yeah. Th so this is basically the proof of this the, uh, this thing. So on the so okay, I can't really go into details, but on one side of the so on each cell, you have two sides. You have three three small squares, and uh, yeah. And so and you look at um, yeah. You look at this symmetric uh, differences between between monochrome surfaces. So that's why you have some. Red and green, uh, red and uh, blue things always, and so you compare you compare a coloring of this guy, not exactly with that guy because uh, so uh, you have to be a little more uh, tricky, but with a coloring of something similar, and you prove that uh, you have the equality you want. Uh, yeah, it's a bit technical, but yeah, so you have to check that you uh, so because. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have. To, so it's just a painful computation, uh, but yeah, it's quite rewarding in the end. I mean, yeah. Okay, so uh, okay, I've just uh, ten minutes left or something like this. I guess I don't know. Okay, so I, I will not have time to develop uh, really further. I mean, I really had a second part of my talk, but um, uh, okay, so I will just try to. Um, Give, uh, so at the very beginning, I said that uh, this presented you was actually uh, the exterior of well, exterior more calculus, uh, in the sense that if you if you try to think about it in an algebraical way, then you are really speaking about exterior powers of some representation. Okay, and uh, you can ask, and okay, and you can ask, yeah, but I. Can't tr I can try to do this with symmetric powers, uh, and uh, and this is I mean the Rechtikin Turayev story tells you that you will as well have a, a link invariant, so this is a fair uh, idea to I mean it's fair to try to look at the symmetric Mori calculus, and there is a funny thing which happens. Uh, it said so this was the the exterior more calculus and so when you go when you try to go from symmetric to exterior uh, from exterior to symmetric what you really do is you change all the ends appearing there to minus n and so you have to kind of make sense of that uh, and so there is a canonical way to to speak about binomials with a negative coefficient at the very beginning uh, and so usually it involves some signs and so on so but you can there is a procedure to actually remove the sign, and so, uh, and when you, you do this, you you end up with a new set of rules, and most of them are very similar, okay, and uh, and so you have a new uh, you have a new uh, 
null calculus, and you can try to play the same game and try to categorize this guy. Okay. And a uh, fact. Uh, so okay, we never wrote a rigor proof, but it's so we have uh, arguments. It's not so it's not possible. to uh, have um, categorification uh, for sim. Uh, le and let me add something here as nice as for. So uh, OK, I don't want to make this statement precise. But uh, if you. If, if you want to, well, the takeaway message here is that we, I mean, OK, maybe it's not a takeaway message, but we really try to find another tau and to exactly do the same game, the same game with uh, symmetric powers. And uh, we are really optimistic and so on. And, and at one point, we realize that so such a tau can't exist at all. So you have to uh, do a little something there. And so uh, the. So one solution we came with, but there are for sure some other possibilities. Then we uh, restrict uh, we restrict a little bit the category, so res restriction on objects and on morphisms. So we don't look exactly at the same category. So uh, okay, maybe I can. Um, so I will look at another category where the my so I, I don't want to look at all my graphs. I want to look at what I call a, a, a vinyl graph. Uh, so a vinyl graph is it's the analog of a bread closure. Okay, so you have links and bread closure, and you have my graph and vinyl graph, and so vinyl graphs are re just the analog of Break closure. Uh, so it's a it's a mug graph which is a, it's embedded uh, embedded in an analyst here. So maybe which lives in C. I don't know with zero here. Uh, and so you require that the graph always turns. Uh, Around, so you want always the arrows to really turn around in a positive way. Okay, and you have the same kind of uh, flow condition and all this. Uh, and uh, a tube-like foam, um, the interval, and which kind of respects this structure. So I can't be. So I just have one minute left. So I can't be really precise here. But the point is, then you have a new category that you that I want to call uh, here foam. And I want to make just one remark. So okay, one remark here is that if you if you cut your your my graph with a ray of the analyst, then you will cross. This my graph a certain number of time, and if you count the intersection with multiplicity, and by multiplicity I mean the labels I'm crossing, I'm crossing, then um, yeah, then this number is fixed uh, thanks to the flow condition. So it doesn't depend on the ray you look at. So actually, for each, so it basically this number is basically the number of track uh, tracks you have on your vinyl graph, and um, and so for each uh, k in and for each integral k, I have a, I have a category of tube-like foams. Um, and the take-home message, so the point is, uh, for so um, how can I say this? Um, so yeah, there is a, so I have minus 30 seconds here, yeah, it's difficult. Uh, so the idea is uh, that uh, okay we okay um, 
there exists a functor g n, which is actually a collection of functor. which categorifies in the symmetric model calculus. OK, this is the first thing. Uh, and OK, in order to build such a functor, actually, we reuse the tau we had before. But uh, instead of, so we use, there is a kind of level ranked reality here. Uh, and uh, so for, where is it? Yeah, for T, uh, well, for the tube-like forms of level K, we use the uh, GLK. Uh, so you have to put N equal to K somewhere. And then you recover the N somewhere else. I can't really explain this. But uh, yeah, and, uh, and so, and then, uh, so it's possible uh, one can define and define, um, so, well, another, another uh, link homology. And, and this link homology cate well, categorifies uh, the SLN quantum invariant associated with symmetric powers of uh, uh, the quantum group. OK. Yeah, and I think I want to stop here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, it's a little tricky to explain, but uh, there is a problem of grading. So, um, um, so the point is for the okay. I can uh, make you make a very brief argument. So. For, for symmetric things, it makes sense to consider n equal 1. This is perfectly well defined, so you take n equal 1. And then if you evaluate this guy, uh, ah, yeah, so a cycle, any cycle, so A, this evaluates to 1. And this guy here, so I put a 2 here, and 1, and 1. This evaluates to uh, uh, quantum 2. OK, so now what you, so you see that if you have a TQFT, you should have a, a kind of net cutting relation. So now you can take, uh, you take this, so I want to call this theta. You take theta times S1. You, is, you expect the value of that to be 2, because this should be exactly the dimension of uh, this guy. But now you can net cut, uh, how can I do that? You have this, this. So you want to net cut here. Mm. Here and there, and so okay. And the net cutting well, this has dimension one, and so the net cutting relation should be something like the tube is just equal to a half sphere, half sphere, and that's it. And so what you end up with is a is a two theta forms with empty decoration somehow, and. Uh, and this is not compatible with the fact that this guy should be should have a graded dimension, which is not. I mean, it's not one. I'm not sure if it really answers the question, but so the problem is there. It's a grading problem. Yeah. So if I fix a film, yeah. Just to move back to the original material. Yeah. And I vary in. Is there some way that you can describe how the? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think, so there is definitely some ways to do it. So we di I didn't think about it, but yes, it's possible to, um, yeah, it's definitely. So yes, but I don't know exactly how, but uh, so this is something I have to look uh, at. Oh. Do you know? I, I never yeah, I don't. I think the. So I, I do. I, so my understanding of that is that uh, if you. So first of all, the graph scan relation is 
computable. I mean, you you just use the formula everywhere, and then uh, you are done. While for the, I mean, if you are giving a, a not diagram, it's not clear at all where you should change a crossing to make it simpler. So I think it makes uh, use of the other scan relation difficult. I mean, for theoretical purpose, it's perfect. But if you want to actually compute things, uh, I think it's it's difficult. But I. I'm probably not the best one suited to, um, to answer this question here.